Hey Raggedy Ann, you looked in the mirror lately? Now's not the time to get picky. Today's video, we're going to be taking a stab at the Mezco Toys Bride of Chucky talking Chucky doll. One month after the events of Child's Play 3, Tiffany, a former girlfriend and accomplice of serial killer Charles Lee Ray, acquires the remains of Chucky from a police evidence locker after bribing and then murdering a police officer with access to the locker. Tiffany, assuming that Ray's soul still inhabits the doll, takes it back to her place. She crudely stitches Chucky back together and reenacts the voodoo ritual which instilled Ray inside the doll. 10 years ago. The star of five Child's Play films, Mezco's Chucky stands 15 inches tall and features real cloth good guy's clothing, 11 points of articulation, and his trademark orange hair. He also talks with seven spine-chilling phrases pulled directly from the films. This Chucky is guaranteed to thrill. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure. Now the package touts this at 15 inches tall, and I could agree to stay with that 15 inch tall quote, but me being the reviewer, I'd like to show you guys taking the Ultra Measuretron 5000 and see if exactly he is 15 inches tall. The Ultra Measuretron tells us yes. The packaging was right. This talking Chucky from Bride of Chucky stands 15 inches in height. Taking that and switching that to centimeters, if centimeters is your thing, then this Chucky stands at 38.1 centimeters in height. For his accessory, he does get a knife. As we've seen this knife before, a serrated bladed knife, very small and fit perfectly into Chucky's hand. You can see that he has already made use of the knife as there is blood splattered all across the bottom of the blade here. Now, the blade itself, or the knife itself, fits into his hand, but it doesn't fit the easiest. If you've collected any one of these talking Chucky figures, you sort of know what to expect. Instead of actually putting it the facing so that the little rivet points are facing sideways, it just doesn't fit into his hand. He's got these doll-like hands, so as a result, you have to always... You can't put it in this way unless you were to pry. You could, I guess, in theory, heat up the hand so you could pry the fingers further away from themselves so that you could actually fit the knife this way. As a result, and getting it immediately out of packaging, the easiest and only way that you can do it is doing it this way, which I kind of feel it should have been a broader or wider hand grip so he could have held the, the knife a little bit better than what he does. But that's the only accessory that he comes with. On par with normally what you would get from like the Mezco 15 inch tall talking Chuckies, the accessories are pretty skimp. You usually get at the very least one knife or one accessory. You don't get a whole lot. Let's have a look at talking Chucky though from the Bride of Chucky film, one of my personal favorites, Child's Play films. Probably second, I would say, to Child's Play 2, which is my personal favorite of the Child's Play films. I guess it would be like Child's Play 2, Child's Play 1, Bride of Chucky, then probably Child's Play 3, and then uh, I guess Curse of Chucky I like. Uh, Cult of Chucky is pretty good. Way, way down at the bottom, way, way down at the bottom is Seed of Chucky.
let me know down below what your order of favorite child's play films are. Again, mine would probably be like two, one, bride, and some other stuff. <laughs> let me know down below. So here we have Chucky from Bride of Chucky, sort of a rebirth of the franchise after the sort of dismal uh, way that Child's Play 3 was handled. I didn't really like that one, but Child's Play Bride of Chucky, the Bride of Chucky, definitely did bring Chucky back to the forefront and uh, made him cool again. Now, with the Child's Play dolls from Mezco, not to dismantle this to death, but you know, when you are picking these up for yourself, you're not really getting them necessarily with the intent that you're getting a real, real accurate looking child's play Chucky that you would see from the film. Instead of sort of, it's more of a, I always thought of them as more cartoonized, animated sort of look of Chucky. Like if you saw them in a cartoon, this would be the kind of Chucky that you would look like, uh, that it would look like. It's sort of like a cross between a living dead doll and I guess like an action figure of Chucky. It's not, it's never really super realistic, but it's pretty good for its size. That's one thing that Mezco is good at doing, large size Chucky's, 15 inches tall, and the fact it does have audio clips, which we will look at in a second. You can't go really wrong for picking these ones up. I keep playing with his hair because when I got him out of the packaging, his hair was really flat. He had like hat head where it was pressed down. You may even, I've seen some people add hairspray to the hair too, just to kind of full it, uh, fill it and give it a little bit more body. You can also just kind of do this, which is what I hopefully won't be doing for the rest of this review. The head sculpt is pretty good, if not being a little bit more of a stylized look of Chucky. Of course, you've got the big open, open socketed area of one of his eye and a regular normal eye on the side. He's heavily stitched up, which is a neat look that I always liked for the doll. You can see that they've, or, Tiffany has done it. Mezco has simply just recreated it. He's got these little staple points where she has stapled the hair to the side of his face and done her best to just kind of staple everything to keep the doll as best together as, it, as he was in the film. He's got some nice staples running down the chin area around the side of the face, around the bridge of the nose, and running up the side. The only part that doesn't unfortunately get repaired here, much like in the film, is this plating, which would have revealed his, his doll head skull underneath there and it's done here in silver the coloring is good and they've airbrushed areas around like the mouth around the areas of the eyes around the bridge of the nose area they've got the dark airbrushing added there and i like the coloring that they have added to the red it really does give him that gruesome bride of chucky look that he looks oh so cool in in the movie you know from certain angles he actually looks better than he does straight forward something off when you look at him straight on when you look at him from the side or especially on this side i think he looks a lot more like he does in the film from the front something gets thrown off along the ways um he is smiling which i do quite like i like i just love the way that he's got the low kind of a brow area here where he's sinisterly laughing the hair is sort of dull hair. It's on par with what you would expect. Um, it's rooted in a way that at least there's not a lot of bare spots. If you move the hair aside, it's not like a, a mask, for example, where they'll seam hair here, fold it down, and then there's this big bald spot. Uh, Mezco, to their credit, has done a pretty good job of plugging the hair in, in specific areas so that the hair is always full. No matter how far you pull it back, it does always look like it's a full area of a full crown of hair here. The coloring is, I feel a little off, but it's not terrible. It's, it is the orange color that he's got in the movie, but I feel like the coloring in the movie, it's probably a little shade darker, but uh, it's, it's pretty good doll hair that they've added to him. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop playing with Chucky's hair. For the rest of his outfit, it's like his face, a mangled good guy body. You can see that his coveralls have been ripped right open and they've done a good job of recreating that from the film. There's also these little slash marks there um, just where the outfit has been ripped up. Of course, all the symbols there from the good guy coveralls are featured here, the hammer and the stethoscope and all that stuff. And we get down to his shoes, which are slightly discolored. I'm glad that they have a slightly discolored shoe on Chucky here, complete with his completed uh, finished treads underneath, showcasing all the tools and stuff like that that he had in the film as well. 
you spin the figure around and this is where the audio clip is the audio trigger button the button is like right sometimes it's hard to find it's like right there the buttons are or the batteries i should say are already installed so there's nothing that you have to do other than just pressing the button and he'll like i said cycle through i think it's like seven point it's like seven phrases from the film we'll go ahead and press it right now and it's right Again, I always keep missing it. It's right there, 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 <laughs> there. Let's just move it open here. I'll show you exactly where it is. There's a little snap. They've made it in such a way that there's the button I thought was further up. There's a speaker right there, your on and off button. And the try, we'll switch it completely to on. So it's actually a good thing that I opened it up. And there's your button down below. Um, if you do want to change the batteries, the battery compartment is right located down below. It takes three. Uh, that is the LR44 batteries. So LR44s are pretty common to find. It's one of the easier button cell batteries to find. So now that we've switched it over to play, let's snap him back up. There we go. Velcro could have also worked a little, a little easier, I think, than snaps, but it makes it a little bit more realistic that he's got hey, snaps there. And we'll go ahead and again cycle the buttons now that I know where the button is located. Press it again. So seven phrases is what you're getting here. To the credit of Mezco, while I never really think that they've nailed the face here of Chucky, their audio clips are always really good. They don't feel hollow and echoey like I've seen with other, uh, other collectibles that have audio clips built in. Their audio clips are always generally really quite clear. Other than just trying to find where the button is located, um, pressing the button is, is relatively easy once you locate the button. And the other thing I wanted to show you as well, when you are pressing a button, it is audio interrupted. In other words, when it cycles through one audio clip, if you press it again, while that audio clip is playing through, it'll interrupt that clip and play the next audio clip. This can also be good too when there are certain long phrases that you want to skip over. You don't have to wait for the audio clip to finish before cycling through the next. Looking at Talking Chucky, his posability is the following. His head will rotate. Um, it does have a good, large, chunky ball joint, so you can move the head all the way around if you wanted to. And you can also hinge it up and down. Uh, his arms will not quite, they'll hinge but that's all you're really getting from them. It almost even defeats the purpose of why they have hinges there in the first place. The arms do rotate all the way around and he does have a swivel in not only the elbow, but also in the wrist. doesn't even seem like why would it need one and why would it really need two? Because if you, there's a hinge there, why then further down only by a, what, like an inch, inch and a half, do you have a secondary hinge? It almost just doesn't, seems to defeat the purpose in all honesty. Uh, and then finally, the change back and forth. Um, there is no wide stance spread that you can get for the legs. Instead, you're only relegated to doing this back and forth. So if you've collected any of these, talking Chuckies that is, this is on par with what you would normally expect. A fairly poseable Chucky, not the most realistic at all looking like it does from the film, but pretty good. At the very least, they incorporate the audio effects, which is always a nice touch to these figures. One thing I forgot to mention in this review was that Chucky also has a swivel in his shoes. This can help tremendously because it will also give a, some extra much needed stability to the doll so he doesn't topple over, especially if you've got the knife in his hand. Now, I know what you're thinking. You looked at this review and watched this review and thought I was overly critical for the figure. And it's quite the contrary. I like picking these up and every time that Mezco does release a Talking Chucky or Talking Tiffany, review of her will be coming soon, 
um, I always pick one up right away. I like the look of them, even though they are a little bit more stylized looking versions of Chucky. Looking at these, you know they're not movie props. They're sort of cuter versions of Chucky in a smaller scale, but they do benefit from having audio. Now, if you're an avid collector and you want to get something much more movie accurate, Trick or Treat Studios, for example, is releasing a one-to-one -one scale of a good guy doll. Doesn't have any audio, mind you, but the price point on that one, I think, is about 500 US dollars. I really wanted to get that, but funds being what they were, I just couldn't afford it and couldn't justify it at the time. Sideshow Collectibles also in their heyday released more movie accurate renditions of Chucky and Tiffany. But again, to find these nowadays, many years later, the prices of those have skyrocketed as well. So this sort of falls within that category of I want to get a talking Chucky or at the very least, I just want to get a Chucky doll and I don't have a lot to spend on it. With this being $100 and it being a 15 inch tall figure, you're getting something a little bit shorter, something a little bit cuter, but it's pretty good for a poseable ch uh, Chucky that also has the ability to talk as well. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, this one isn't super new. You should still be able to find it in comic book stores. My comic book store, for example, has uh, has re-gotten these, like they've, they've got new stock of these coming in. That's why I was able to pick up this one. And I also picked up The Bride of Chucky Tiffany, which up to this point, I've never reviewed. So review of her will also be coming up probably after this review, if you guys want to stay tuned for that. Either way, though, today we were looking at and talking about the Mezco toys. This was The Bride of Chucky, Talking Chucky Doll. If you've managed to pick up any of these talking Chuckies for yourself, let me know down below what you think of the figures. I know, again, they're not super movie realistic, but they're pretty good for what they are. Also, if you want to go back and have a look at some of my other Chucky reviews, there's a whole playlist just for Chucky. If you like the demonic doll, there's a playlist there for you. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, guys, as certainly more videos will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.